morning, Sarah and Duncan. They, thank you very much for joining us this morning to talk about your experiences as foster carers. Um, I thought we could just start with a bit of background, maybe tell us the kind of fostering that you've been doing um, and how long you've been fostering for. So we were approved for fostering in December 2018 um, and we've been doing lots of different fostering because to start off with we were looking for maybe short-term fostering um, and then we were um, advised by our social worker to look at um, emergency duty team fostering so we've been doing emergency duty team probably since um, March of 2019. So in our first year we had 20 placements of children um, for short term over the weekend and it so it, it fitted in with our work really um, yeah. and we've really enjoyed that. Mm. And don't forget th thrown into that Lee we've also done um, respite care as well. Yeah yes um, so and, you, and you decided on on these more short-term types of fostering because they fitted in around your work. Um, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so do you want to say a little bit more about about what you do work-wise? Yeah, so we both work full time um, and we're both police officers. Um, so we just wanted, we wanted to foster, but at the moment it had to fit in with our work plans because um, I retire later, later on this year and it was our plan then to, to look at fostering for them. But our process, we thought the process would be longer um, to, to get started in fostering. So we, we applied early um, and it's been really successful for us because the sh being offered the short term over the weekend or maybe when we've got breaks off in the week and the respite um, caring, it's fitted in with our lifestyle and what we can offer, really. Mm. Yeah, okay. And what was it that made you think about fostering originally? What, what sort of motivated you um, to want to foster? Well, we, we think we've, we've done a reasonable job with our, with our own three children. Um, we've got lots of... Uh, life skills in the jobs that we do. Um, I'm also in the police. I did 12 years before in the ambulance service. So 12 years in the ambulance service, 16 years now in the police, coupled with Sarah's 29 years in the police and bringing up three of our own children. We, we just feel that we've got lots of personal life skills um, to give back to these children. And we just we just want to make a difference to people's lives already and, and to you know to make a difference yeah 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 well that's important isn't it yeah um so i want to ask you a question now about the application and the assessment process and um, sometimes people are a little bit daunted when we say that the um the process can take six to eight months um and and sometimes people are also um, worry that it's going to be quite an intrusive and process. So how is it for you? I mean it is quite a long process um, and it is reasonably intrusive because you know it has to be because of your caring for children so we, they have you have to make sure that you're able to do that and not pose any risks for children so you know although it is long um, there is a reason behind that um, and you've always got your social worker who will help you with any of the form filling in They'll they'll go through your life your life story to put on onto paper. They they'll almost write it for you. So although it's it might you might think it's daunting, there is lots of help help available. There's and there's also people like Duncan and I who can talk people through that process as well. So there's always lots yeah. of help. Yeah, and that's important, isn't it? That you know yes. um, that there are foster parents who are already doing the role who can support you. And, and, and help you. And actually, some people say when they come to the end of that assessment process, they've actually found it quite helpful. Um, you know, because it does give you that opportunity to prepare and, and think about caring for children in a way that might be different to how you've experienced either, either being parented or, or looking after your own children. Yeah, I, I do think it is helpful, and it's helpful as well because actually, when you do become a foster carer, there is more form filling that you need to do. So it's you know it's a process that you you just have you have to do, and you do get used to it very quickly because you you have a way to, you find ways of them um, being able to you know write things down and record things um, that is easy for you. Um, how did your family and friends? respond when you when you mentioned that um, you were thinking about applying to be foster parents? They've been really really supportive from the outset. Um, our, our own children have been really supportive in looking after the children in placement as well. 
-hmm. which social services have actually commented on because we've got a really good strong family network yeah it's, it's also important for the children in placement i think because sometimes they might not have had that extended family um to you know to look after them and they find it quite reassuring i think the, the children we've got in placement at the moment quite often facetime our daughters just to say hello to them because they can't at the moment in lockdown whereas normally they would come down and take them out and and maybe go for the park with them so you know that just gives that extra element to the children you've got in placement yeah and obviously your children are all adults now so they they can support you in a sense in that role they can be your your backup can't they yeah they and they are you know they'll they'll take the children to school or they'll do some respite for us so so that children in our placement don't actually have to go somewhere else so it's really good yeah. and that gives you some good continuity for the children um and it gives you a break because you will need a break yeah. Yeah. Um, because the children, they do push buttons and, and it's nice to have a break. Yeah. So that's why, you know, that support network is so important, isn't it? So that yes. you, you don't feel like you are doing it all alone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what have you found most rewarding in your first year of fostering, would you say? Well, I think just, being able to take time to speak to pe um, people who come free on a placement. We've had, we've had sort of longer term placements with the children we've got with us at the moment have been with us for seven months. And we've had one person who just came for the night and it's just lovely to sit down and, and talk to them and listen to them and just to make a difference in, that, in their life really, or to just do what you can in that short period of time that, that they're with you. Um, just to be kind, um, to listen to their story and to offer reassurance when they're in their time of need. Mm. I think. And you've got a particular Yeah, one. a particular case that we've had in the last 12 months was a, a refugee from Africa. Mm. Um, he'd, uh, he, he managed to escape, I believe he was in, in chained uh, in Africa and he managed to get through to Calais and lived in the camp in Calais for several months before he finally got onto uh, the back of a lorry with a couple of his friends and ended up in sunny Gloucestershire. Uh, we were on EDT call that weekend and they phoned us and asked us if we could uh, take one of the children. And he ended up staying with us for seven days. Yeah. Uh, didn't speak a word of English, but uh, his parents had sent him to school to learn French. So our French came on leaps and bounds and uh, we were able to communicate through Google Translate uh, and speak and speak French to him. We also had lots of support with that as well, even from the EDT, because they put in, us in contact with a foster carer who normally takes asylum seeking children. Um, and we were able to phone him and meet up with him, which was really lovely because um, our placement then got to meet his friends. So that was really good as well. And it also gave us another contact, you know. Who's and he's actually gone on now, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's, he's now in assisted living in, in Gloucester yeah. and doing really, really well. And that must be very rewarding knowing that you sort of, you've started him off on that process and, and, and helped him get to school this year. Even if, it, as you say, it was only for a short time, but you can make a big difference even doing that short term emergency style of fostering, can't you? Yes, definitely. So, of course, we have to acknowledge that sometimes fostering can be challenging. So what, what would you say you found particularly challenging in your, in your first year of fostering? Um, we've, we've had um, children in placement who might have violent outbursts, and that's quite challenging, especially um, one, one particular one was when my daughter was here. So she was quite upset with it as well, because she doesn't like to see anyone being hurt. Um, but you have to weigh up those those times you, you have to sort of work with a child to work through those traumas and to see um, why they happen and there's normally a trigger to them and mm -hmm. with this particular child they would just run run off and want to be on their own for a little while so you just have to give them some space and work through what um, would, would be reassuring to them mm -hmm. um, so although you've got that tiny bit of bad most of it is really really good because the rest of the time he was just such a rewarding little boy and just wanted to learn and play and just be with you all the time so yeah there, there are ups and downs but there are more ups than downs as well yeah. uh, the, the, sorry Lee the, the beauty with 
uh, that particular child, we, we worked out what the trigger was. Mm -hmm. So we were able to give a really good handover to the long-term foster carers for him, yeah. uh, which was really, really useful for them. And do you think your, the, the training that you, you have done as new foster carers has, has helped you with that, with that? Yeah, definitely. So, so I, I'm quite interested in therapeutic parenting now. And I think we probably did do that with our own children, but unconsciously. But now we consciously try and sort of use those tactics, as you, I don't know what you would call them, but in, in parenting the children. So we're, we're actually aware of what we're doing rather than just sort of going along yeah. and not thinking what we're doing. We think about you know, if we did this, if we did that. And certainly, yeah, all the, all the courses, the online courses and the face-to-face -face courses are really helpful with that. Um, and you get offered all of those obviously for free, which is great. Yeah. So um, what support have you found really helpful in your first year? Because as we, talk, we spoke earlier about, about having a network of people, but you know, support obviously is a, big, is a big part of the role that you do, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I, for me, the, the continuity of having a social worker for your first year in foster caring, um, because our foster care, uh, Foster worker was absolutely superb in that first 12 months. We can't uh, can't fault her in one way. Yeah, she was amazing. And she sort of like championed us to other people within the fostering service to say that we would, you know, she knew what we were able to do and what we weren't. Because some people were thinking because we work full time, maybe we wouldn't be able to look after a child full time. But she was saying no, absolutely these, you know, these I'm quite sure these two can look after a child full time if given, you know, the necessary support. Um, and yeah, she was just brilliant, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. and, and you have them for a whole year, which is which is just great. So during your first year, you've got lots and lots of help. Yeah. And what about support um, groups? Have you found those helpful? Yeah, we have found the support groups helpful. Um, more so, sort of meeting some the foster carers who've been fostering for a long time um, and just chatting things through with them and I've mm -hmm. yeah from those support groups I've gained a few telephone numbers of people who I, I can contact you know if, if we're having a bit of a crisis to sort of just gain some advice from them so yeah that's pretty useful as well. And as you were saying you're, you're in a position now and um, you know just over a year on that you can offer some of that support to new carers as well can't you? Yeah we've definitely um we've had new foster carers who are going through the assessment process we get in contact with them and meet up with them and give them advice and I just stay in contact through the through the application process really just to until they go through their panel and just check that they're check in that they're okay um, and yeah. So yeah that's really useful as well we really enjoy that as well as um helping other people yeah. Yeah. okay so um just to finish off, if there are people out there who are watching this and they've been thinking about fostering for a while and they're, they're hesitating to take that first step, um, you know, what, what would you say to them? Go and speak to other fosterers and get a feel. Get the positives, get the negatives. Um, and if you're teetering on the edge, we, once you've spoken to foster carers like us, we'd like to think that actually you will you'll embark on a... On a well, I, a career in foster, foster caring yeah you definitely won't, you won't regret it if you're thinking about it then you know there must be something there that you want to give back just to um children and young adults so definitely go for it you, re you won't regret it um and you'll be part of a massive family which you know and we're all there to help you really that's great thank you very much thanks to both of you for joining us during foster care fortnight um, and for sharing your experiences um, just over a year after you were approved. So thank you for that.